What's going on everybody? Welcome to part five of our intermediate Python programming tutorial series. In the last tutorial, we were talking about list comprehension and generators, uh, or rather generator expressions, and we're gonna keep building on that in this tutorial. So in this case, all we've done is actually created either a generator object or a list. Either way, we've just kind of created like an iterable as if that was our objective, but many times you're not gonna necessarily be using list comprehension or a generator simply to make an iterable. Maybe you actually wanna do something or you wanna manipulate that iterable rather than um, create that iterable. Okay, so let's talk about that. So let's say we have a starting uh, list of information. So we're starting with an iterable and this just has numbers in it. Try to give some numbers that are divisible by five because <laughs> that's what we're going to check for. So just have some that are and some that aren't. Then define div by five and this is just a function that takes any number and is going to tell us if it's divisible by five. It's going to return true or false. So div by five. Now what we're going to say is if num uh, modulo five equals zero. This just means if the remainder of holy moly, there we go. If the remainder of this division uh, is zero, that means it's divisible by five. Therefore, we return true. Else, we're going to return false. So now what we're going to say is x y z equals and let's make a generator uh, expression first. We're gonna say i for i in input list if div by five i. So in this case, whoops. In this case, we've got a lot going on here. First of all, we're passing i, I for i in input list if div by five i. Okay, so now we've got even more i's. So again, it, it can help at least initially when you're looking at these to like write them out in full. And especially as, as we get to the end of this tutorial, uh, it, things can get really hairy. So in this case, you, you would read this one first for i an input list and we'll say x, y, z equals. This is a generator, so it's not making a list, but let's just do this just for our sakes. Uh, I for i an input list, and then you would say if div by five i, well then x, y, z dot append i, right? That's basically it. Again, it's this is in this case, this is a generator. Um, so it's not making a list. Sorry, I'm gonna move these. So it's not making a list, but anyway, but that this is how it would, how it looks logically, or this is how the logic is working for this generator. Okay, so I'll just comment that out. So that's x, y, z. Now, what we can say is for i in x, y, z, print i. Oops, there we go. So what it's doing now is x, y, z is a generator and we're iterating over that generator and sure enough, it went through the input list and found just what was uh, divisible by five. What else could we have done rather than for i in x, y, z, print i? Well, we could say, print i for i in xyz. Could have just done that. Pull this over. See? Same thing. So a lot of times people will actually call list comprehension one line or four loops because that's basically what they're, they're, they're using list comprehension, not necessarily, necessarily for list comprehension sake. They're literally just doing it to put it all on one line. And so you'll hear people call them one line or four loops myself included, uh, just depending on what you're trying to do. So, so anyway, so you can do that. Now, could we make a generator out of this? Or a, uh, can we do list comprehension with this? Absolutely. Literally all we're doing is this and then this. Now remember up here, if we were to print X, Y, Z, we would never have actually had an answer. So when you're printing I for I and X, Y, Z, your machine is not needing to load the entire list because it's not a list, but in this case, it's, it, it wouldn't need to load an entire list into memory because it's actually iterating over a generator. So you're saving your memory, but it's slower-ish. 
but because so, sometimes building a list is actually intensive. So now we're going to say x, y, z equals i for i in this. So again, just, just so we are totally clear, I'll print x, y, z here. We're redefining x, y, z here. I'll print x, y, z here. Save and run that. I don't know why it keeps popping up over there. Anyway, we get x, y, z is actually a generator object. And then here, it's, it's truly a list. But we can iterate over them all the same. So we could, in theory, just do this. Copy, paste, run. Same thing. We're just iterating over that list. What if we do this? Sorry, we have too much stuff here, so let's just do this. Just that one print statement. Why didn't anything happen? Well, it is a generator. It's not list comprehension. This is a generator object. So nothing is going to happen in that case. So again, that's why one-liner for loops a lot of times are actually just they're using list comprehension. But you'll never see someone who's attempting to do this use a generator instead because it's not going to do the same thing that you were actually hoping for. OK, so, um, so that's that. Also, as I've basically shown through these examples, you can run a function um, what either in this case we're we're creating this generator by an if statement. And in this case, we're building a list based on this if statement, whether or not something will actually be in that list. So you can do that. You can also just run functions with data in that iterable. So here we're printing I, but you didn't have to print I. You could say um, you could run a function, right? You could run anything you wanted. So it doesn't necessarily, it could be, you know, it could be any operation. I'm, I'm like blanking on it because there's like infinite operations that you could plausibly do with a function, but it's anything you want, right? <laughs> anything. Okay, so you can run anything with that function. Now comes um, the exciting part. So uh, what if, I think I'll leave, uh, yeah, we'll just leave that and we'll just not have any of the prints. And then I'm going to make some space and pull this up. So now, what if you wanted to do something like, um, I guess we could, I'm trying to decide which one I want to do. If I want to build the for loop first or do list comprehension first. I think we'll just do list comprehension first. So let's say um, we want to eventually wind up at print i and i i. So print i and i i for in this case, it would be I, I in range. You can pick whatever you want. I'll just do uh, five. And then that's one of the list comprehensions, but we've got another one, which will be then for I in range five. Let's see how that works. These are hard to build without yeah, thinking too hard. OK, so in this case, we've got all this stuff. Um, basically, it's every combination, right? So, so this might be kind of confusing because we're like embedding all of these into each other. So, what is it? How how would you like? The way that I would go about doing this, at least initially, is this is identical to four i in range um, five, four i in range. Five. Sorry, this should be I I. Print I I I. So always, you if you're gonna at least initially, you kind of have to like work backwards when you're building these, or at least that's how I do it. You could in theory work forwards, um, you know, because this four I here is right here, and then you would, I don't know, you still gotta work backwards. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, I find it's easiest to be like to just work backwards. So first, we know we're going to be printing i and i i. So you start with that, and then you know you're going to have this for i i in range five. So you would have that rather than the colon. You've got these brackets, boom, and then finally you've got this for i in range five. So that paste, and again rather than the colon, you've got the brackets commenting all this out, 
running it, same thing. So you can actually embed these these one-liner one-liner for loops, um, but you can also say something like this: like rather than printing i and i i, you could say this, and we could say uh, let's stick stick with x y z equals print x y z, and now it's actually a list of these tuples because we chose for them to be tuples, but they don't have to be tuples. We could say they're a list. Right, okay. So you can do that, but also we can embed as a generator expression. But of course the print will just be a generator expression, but we can iterate over that generator expression. Boom. Done. Okay, now of course, this was this here is what list comprehension. So the create uh, this generator is actually not really doing anything in our favor because eventually we're actually building that list. Uh, but if we were to iterate over it instead, so if we said for i in um, x y z like this print i, if we don't need to access that entire list all at once, this is a preferable method for us. Let me do this. Oh, ha ha. Let me do this. <laughs> so at each level of this generator, we're actually running into trouble. Uh, so instead, we would have to be like, I got myself in trouble. This wasn't my plan to go this way. <laughs> so actually, you would have to go, you'd probably want to, let's see if we can solve this one live in the field. So for i and x, y, z print i. So each one of these is actually this list. So then you would just say for i, i in Ah, yes, there we are. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. I definitely, I wasn't thinking of showing, uh, doing that in a generator, so that's why I was not prepared. Anyways, but there you go. Okay, so in this case, we were able to embed everything into a generator. At no point, as long as I'm not missing anything, we can comment this out. At no point were either of these ranges in memory. So in theory, you could say like this, um, I'll have to cancel it pretty quickly, but this should run. This should at least start running. Right. Okay. So it'll run and it'll keep going. And that's so like, we built this huge thing. But if we were to say, uh, if we were to convert any of these basically <laughs> to brackets, we would be in a world of hurt really fast. Uh, so the old saying is like with list comprehension, the big thing is you'll run out of memory with big like so with like big list comprehensions you would run out of memory with big generators you'll run out of time okay so that's kind of a good way to kind of think about them um, but you can you can at least start with a gigantic generator okay so I think that that's enough on list comprehension and, and generator expressions for now we will be coming back to generators because they're actually super powerful and I don't want to leave them behind and also just there's a little bit more to be learned here. Um, but that's enough for now. One quick update I wanted to make, I, I meant to talk about this, but I didn't. Um, in, the, in the part where I said, where we did basically something like this, like uh, print i for i in range five, and we were saying, hey, that doesn't work for a generator. So this is old, this is the new. And nothing happened, remember? And I was like, hey, but it didn't happen because this is a generator. But if we made it list comprehension, it does work. But what if, okay, you have the generator. What if you said x, y, z equals that? Right, you run it, so nothing happens. But what if you iterated over that for i in x, y, z? 
and you wanted to print out those values, what would you have to do? Would you say print i? Or would you just say i? Because in this generator, each i is that print i in range 5. So actually you would just say i. And you can actually run that, and that actually works. So I just wanted to point that out to you. That's all. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, till next time.